the medical that they're doing their when they apply for medical mm -hmm, school mm -hmm. it's not so much about their qualifications mm -hmm. or their yes more right. about what their beliefs mm -hmm. yeah are. Wow. so so again then yeah. we could we could spend the whole time you oh, know, yeah. kind of chasing that one but <laughs> the reality yeah. is yeah. in our world where we are <laughs> yes. whether it's it's city whether it's state whether it's our church whether it's or our Disney. county whether it's <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah, I and mean, we can go to keep going to the cows come home on that. But um, the reality is, this don't forget this that God is still God. That no, it doesn't change because our society thinks it's changing. He's on Jesus is on the throne. Yes, he God is. is not wringing his hands right now. He didn't lose any sleep last night. Okay, he's in control. He will continue to be in control. So let us stay in spirit control as we stand up for whatever we're doing, but trusting in Him. And sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't. I'm pra praise the Lord for good stories uh, like that. Oh, I love um, that you so, just said that. Hmm? I love that you just said that. I'm going to think about that every night when I can't go to sleep. That it's like God didn't lose him any sleep. Right, right, yeah. So I why like that. It's sort of like, I, I got this. I, mean, I know. You know so he's got it. He's got it. And so let's, let's, let's remember that. Okay. Um, and so we had that. We passed around the food. And Linda. We prayed for the Hancock family. We're losing two dogs this week. Oh, no. 15 year old Corey and our 9 year old Tucker. Oh, both. Oh, no. Okay. They're, they're pups. Uh, if y'all got pups that are really part of the family, they become part of the family. We've become their pack. We, they, we're their family. They're part of our pack, or we're part of their pack. Um, yes. Will do. Thank you, dear. Um, and y'all had to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is Roger, yeah. yeah. This is God, your son. Oh, he's okay. nine years old. He's got a tumor the size of a football. Oh, no. 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 Oh
uh, to them, through them, right where you, where they're planted, and and Jason, as he receives the Sunday school lesson and others, that uh, he'll be ministered to and reminded how much he's loved and prayed for. For Dennis Havard, uh, Don's uh, nephew, is, has tests being run, uh, so right now uh, we don't know uh, what, what the finding will be, uh, but we just pray that uh, you will guide and direct all the tests that will be going on, and then uh, give wisdom to the doctors. We continue to pray for Sharon White and her mom, Selva, the house, her mom and the Memory Center, uh, just be with Shane Kelly in a really special way, Father. We also pray for Michael Cunningham as he is deployed, and Jehovah Shammah to be with him. Father uh, Don had listed Luke and Chris and Brianna, our seniors here. Uh, they're beginning their senior year, and we want to continue praying with them, along with uh, our high schools and middle schools, and pray for our uh, Good News Clubs, Father, as uh, they are ministering and, and praying on our campuses, and be with each and every one of them. Father, for the Matt O'Dell family and the loss of Matt uh, last Sunday uh, in that car accident. Father, we continue praying for Linda. Mm -hmm. yeah, she just got back from getting to see her sweet mom. Um, <coughs> thank you that she had a good time, good report, and just decisions that they'll have in the coming days, Father. For Judy Walker, Father, we'll be celebrating Steve's life uh, next uh, this coming Friday. Uh, but for Judy, Father, again, mm, God of comfort, Prince yes. of Peace, just, just massage her heart, touch her where only you can touch, and yes. taste the salt of her tears, and, yes. and let us be the hands and feet yes. uh, for her and be her family, Father. As, uh, uh, she doesn't have many here locally, so uh, allow us uh, to love her in a, in a supernatural way, Father. Uh, so we just love you and praise you and just <laughs> give this time to you. Psalm 19, just another one of your love letters to us. Yes. Uh, let us revel in it and enjoy it this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So um, we're going to be. What, hello. <laughs> just pray for you. And real quick, I was going to say, I heard y'all pray in the house soul name. So that paperwork is. Say what? Oh, yeah. The house soul. Oh, yay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So praise the Lord. Dear. The house soul. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. 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 With that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jeff. Hey, next. Exactly. And Jeff. Uh, uh, okay. I've been praying for my dad uh, for a while, and he's been going through some stuff for a long time. And, he told me this last week he's going to try to go to church. Yay! Now that's oh, right. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, amen. And I got to praise the Lord. Give me a praise. I got to praise the Lord. I was going to say, because our 16 year old granddaughter goes to Lake Belton High School, was baptized last Sunday night. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's nice that to see the them teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Um, amen. And so, uh, job wise, what? I know world? this yeah. past week they still haven't made a decision. Oh, okay. so it's not a no. It's not a no. It's hey. still waiting. It's yeah. still, still, okay. All right. still good. That's good. Still in the hunt. Still in the hunt. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. So, um, uh, Psalm 19. Well, hey, David. Good <laughs> <laughs> um, Psalm 19, 1 through 14. That's because there's only 14 verses. So, we're not just doing 1 through 14. We're going to try to do the whole uh, chapter here. Um, if we, we wrote it down in real simple terms, it'd be his works, his word, and our hearts. And we'll see how the, our hearts turns in at the end. And that's what I pray, that this isn't just something that we say, oh, David got it, didn't he? Now I want us to get it and take it out here with us uh, today. Uh, so let's pray that we do. And um, uh, so before we read, uh, what I'd like to do is someone in a minute would just read the 14 verses so we get the big picture and then we're going to break it into three three parts um, and see how each part ministers to us and then hopefully end in a way that we have something to take with us when we leave um, and we hope we pray that every time um, but uh, a guy named C.S. Lewis, y'all heard of C.S. Lewis? Uh, he's one of my good friends. Uh, Keith, <laughs> Keith went to elementary school with, with <laughs> no, it's not just there. He was a great <laughs> <laughs> But C.S. is one of the old dead guys, but he's a good old dead guy, and was an atheist who became a Christian and then a prolific writer. Um, amazing, amazing, I love, I love. But this is his quote about Psalm 19. So. 
He, he said, I take Psalm 19 to be the greatest poem in the Psalms and one of the greatest lyrics in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And so uh, C CS is a lot smarter than this old coach here. Uh, so I, I take that to heart. That calls me, I already had it all marked up. I'd read it before and studied it before. Uh, but it actually calls me to say, whoa, okay, I want to, and, and it is, it truly is. Um, so simply put, he's going to really talk about his works and creation, his word, and then at the end, what it does to David as he acknowledges and realizes and observes those things, what it did to him. And when I put on there, I didn't put his works, his word, and David's hearts, but our hearts because again if the Bible is nothing else it is relevant and it is practical for today uh, not just when it was written okay would y'all agree with that okay so would somebody read Psalm 19 1 through 14 for me please I'll read it the heavens declare the glory of God and the infirmament shows his handiwork day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth in their works to be the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from its heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than any are they than gold, yea, than more fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And so, this first passage, one through six, it could be a hymn because you know we talked about that the word psalms uh, actually refers in its original root word it's like a strumming or uh, plucking of a stringed instrument. Okay, and we know that the psalms uh, are full of psalms poems, and we talked last time that uh, what kind of emotions are, uh, will we find as we read through all the psalms, which we're not going to do all the psalms, we're going to do selected psalms, but if we read through all the psalms, what emotions do we find that we talked about last week? All of them. Hmm? All of them. All of them. Yeah, yeah this, is, boy, this one is a very joyous and beautiful, uh, uplifting but as we continue, we're going to find times when there's fear, when there's anger, when there's questions, uh, all kind of emotions, okay? And we said that that should tell us something, because this is the inspired word of God, right? So what should it tell us when we see all the emotions in here? What should it teach us? It's relevant. It's relevant. And Yolanda should have sang that instead of reading it. <laughs> I love that. And, and she have played the music for me. <laughs> and she's not going to let you go to slack either. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And so, so, uh, but what, what does that say to us? Well, if, we're, if, if, they're, if they're not, they also can be convicting. The Holy Spirit can convict us when we read them. If, if we have questions or, you know, it's like, oh, that that just doesn't really sound good, then then we have to look inward and say, mm -hmm. hmm, is it supposed to sound good and we're not right? In other words, is it okay to ask God questions? Mm -hmm. Is it yes. okay mm -hmm. to say, I don't understand? Mm -hmm. Is it okay to say, right now, God, I'm just angry. Mm -hmm. I'm hurt. 
I don't know what to do with this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I guarantee it is. Mm -hmm. It's like I'd want my child to be able to say, have the freedom to say that, because if not, I can't help them navigate through whatever that emotion is. So God is saying to us, as we read through the Psalms, um, it's okay to be real. He already knows if you're faking it anyway, right? So no, no need in faking it. Okay, so uh, let's, let's sort of break down one through six for, for a moment. Um, a hymn about the enormity and majesty of his creation, okay? Woo! Where's your favorite spot you've ever been in, whether it's the mountains, coast, around the world, some place where you just were like, whoa, you just stood there and went, wow. You ever been some place like that? Rocky Mountains. And I know it, huh? Rocky Mountains, Rocky okay. Mountains. It's all over, from Canada and Colorado. Key West, Florida. Huh? Key West, Florida. Key West, Florida. Huh? Anything else? Bell, Texas. Bell, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I didn't want you saying looking in the mirror. Good <laughs> 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 kind of old Belt in Texas. <laughs> but yeah, and we don't have to go to the mountains and to the coastline. Or somewhere, I just remember the first time I'd seen pictures of it. I used it in examples in my evangelism class about the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. But when Janice and I actually went to the Grand Canyon, it's amazing. and I stood there, eight miles across, that's the biggest ditch. I mean, I can't even fathom. <laughs> what about the birth of a child? Yeah, birth and, of a child. I yeah. mean, yeah. it's like yeah. Asha's creation. It's yeah. amazing. I, I want to tell you something that's miraculous right here. Watch this. Watch. You ready? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's something down here that, it, that comes into my lungs and mm -hmm. it actually gets yeah. into my system and it gets in my blood and it goes all over my yeah. body and it, isn't that crazy? And then when I breathe out all that junk, all the plants are going, <laughs> you know? it's miraculous yes. what God has done mm -hmm. with our bodies in our life and we can get so busy sometimes and put on these blenders. And there's beauty right before us. And we don't see the flowers. We sure don't smell them. We don't recognize the beauty of the and forest the or, or, or the people around us or appreciate. And so um, the heavens tell of the glory of God and their expanse declares the work of his hands. Whoo, beautiful creation. But even more majestic is creator mm -hmm. so man we can go wow man that's amazing but not to forget who the creator is Janice and I years ago went to Bend Oregon on a mission trip and we were doing surveys with another two couples and, and they were going to do a church plant and I was just amazed it, first of all it was beautiful it's a high desert and you could see the mountains from there and it was just it was amazing <clears throat> Beautiful, beauty, beauty. But we went door to door talking with people. People talked to us. But we'd ask open ended questions. You know, when you think of God, what do you think about? Mm -hmm. Don't ever think about God. Yeah. Here they're sitting in this. Never think about God. But that answer came so many times. Mm -hmm. wow. If a church was to start here in your neighborhood, what would you hope that they would focus on? I have no idea. I thought about church. Oh, wow. I don't think about church. And, and so we would come back, all of us, we'd all have different neighborhoods, we'd come back and we'd all share what we shared, and it was very depressing. And here's this yeah. little pastor sitting there wanting to know where, he's trying to figure out the best place to start a church. But it's like nobody, but everybody in their yard had all their toys, had all their little off-road little vehicles and their kayaks, and their, they enjoyed and loved the creation and we're just missing the creator it was amazing a church plant did start there by the way when we did find on our last day sort of a hot spot where some people were interested and that's what they were trying to do is find an interested group that they could begin to work but the reality I asked a just just last week I asked a foreign exchange student from France tell me about back home in France Tell me about your family. Tell me about God. Tell me about Jesus. Tell me about church. Tell me. She just looked at me. Sweet, sweet little girl. And she said, church 
It's for old people. That's what she said. And she was serious. It's for old people. My family is in, we're too busy for things of church. I said, what about God? I believe there's a God, but I don't know him well. She's in my class, and it's evangelism and discipleship, so she's going to you going to learn? <laughs> yeah. And they are going to have a test. You know, I hate, hate to even give a test in there, but, it's a, but praise the Lord. But she's so real and honest. But I know that to be true. I've traveled to Europe. Jens and I have had the privilege of being there. These beautiful cathedrals that are museums. They're a museum. And guys, they can happen here. It can happen here. We could be a generation away. Two generations away from our big, beautiful churches all around Bell County being a museum or a storage place or mm-hmm. something other mm-hmm. than a worship center. Mm-hmm. Woo, okay, man, what took us there? The heavens tell. Is that supposed Lord? to be depressing, Charlie? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to kick us in the pants and light a fire. Right. Right. And as we continue, we'll see that. But the heavens tell the glory of God and their expanse declares the work of his hands. Guys, we just have to continue, continue, continue um, to be in awe of our creator, mm-hmm. the author of, our, of this word. Not the teacher of the Bible study, not our pastor. God wants to use the pastor. He wants to use your Bible study teachers, your discipleship classes, all of the things that you've had. He wants to use that. But he's the author. We have no truth to share if we don't have his word. And we'll get to that in a minute. We're talking creation. Day by day, 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 day to day pours forth speech. Hey, Charlie. And night. Yes, sir. Sorry to back up just a touch. Yeah, touch. Go. So I'm looking at the King James Version. It yeah. says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So let's look at the device that's doing this proclamation mm-hmm. and, and this, this glorifying. Mm-hmm. Did he say a deer? Because we can find the front, the back, top, bottom, beginning, and end of a deer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I challenge any of us, mm-hmm. go outside and show me the end of the sky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go find me the end of the sky. Where does the sky end? Mm-hmm. So just look at the magnitude mm-hmm. of the device yes. that's raising these praises yeah. and glorifying Amen. his name. Amen. And we're going to get to that in verse 4. That's where we're headed right there. <laughs> and that's good. Thank you. You got it. God grabbed you right now. <clears throat> Hang on to that thought. Okay. Well, thank you, Chief. Day to day pours out, pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun. That's where Matt is really talking about. Think about it. Okay, the sun, which is so far away and it's so huge, except it's like a tent, the whole universe that surrounds our sun and our earth, our little pebble, tiny pebble. Because what have we discovered over these years? And we thought our sun was so huge and we thought our galaxy, the Milky Way, is like, whoa. But because of Hubble and stuff other than Hubble, you know, isn't it Hubble? Isn't it Hubble? Yeah, okay. I said that and then I was like, uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> Hubble, the telescope. What have we discovered about our galaxy and about our sun? It's a very small planet. It's, it's, really it's just a piece of it. Just, and that's all we can see because of what Matt's talking about. It just, it just goes and goes and we can't even comprehend that. And as a little boy, I would lay in bed and I asked my dad one time when we lived out in the country and the windows are up and the cool breeze is coming in. You know, because we had a fan on the other side of the house sucking the wind through, you know, (laughs) out with air conditioning. And I just remember, and you could actually see the stars. Mm -hmm. And I said, how far do they go, Dad? That's a little guy. He said, they just keep going. "Uh Uh-huh. He said, yeah, they just keep going and going and going. Well, that made my brain go, I mean, think about it. Because we, everything, we're in a room that's in a building that's on a plot of land, that's in a town, that's in a county, that's in a state, that's in a nation, that's one of the nations of the world. 
everything has these borders. Man, your brain can't even deal with this forever, ever, never, ever, ever. <laughs> yes, sir. When you think about that, you know, the vastness and, and the infinity of, of everything. Uh, there was a song that I heard many, many years ago that you can still listen to it on YouTube. Uh, it, it's a magnificent song, but the song is, you love me as if I were the only one to love. Mm -hmm. Yet you still, you did all this, yet even though I'm that little bitty speck, you love me as if I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. And he placed every star, gazillion stars in place, and he knows Joe. Which is really not a big deal yeah. to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real, deal to me. It's a real yeah. big deal to him because yeah. he right. let his son die for you. So yeah. it was a, a great, great price was paid. Why do, yes. why do you think he specified heavens and the earth? Just the earth. Yeah, the earth. But I mean, yeah. why didn't he say heavens and earth and Jupiter and Mars? And yeah. Because, because this, this is where we're. Well, this, this is where, where this is where is. our children and where the children that we be. know about. Yeah. Again, see, I don't even know how to go there. About these aliens <laughs> I just, and stuff. I, I, and I, their I, life on other <laughs> planets and I stuff like see, that. Yeah. But, but I do know. I do know. He did say Earth. <laughs> and and this is our little pebble that he did place us on. Yeah. That that I do know. <laughs> and and the reality of him saying that there's no speech and no words or voice to be heard, but it goes out to all the nations all over the world and not a word is spoken. Okay, think about that. Because we can, or we, or we, we can, that doesn't mean we do, see him in all creation. Like I said, simple thing of taking a breath of the miracle of birth, of that beautiful scenery that we Said and went, whoa, wow, thank you, Lord. That time when you prayed for peace and he washed you over with peace because you realized he was peace. Instead of you trying to have peace, you let him be peace. Yes. That's what he wants. You know, so he, he is just screaming all around us. But you know what Satan wants to do? He wants to, he wants to distract you from all of it. He wants us so worried about the cares of this world and what people are saying, what people are doing. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 12, spiritual armor. He was talking about spiritual armor. He said, our struggles are not against the flesh and the blood and the bone. If somebody robs you of your joy, Satan's going, ha, ha, I just think you out. I got you distracted about the joy of your salvation, the joy of the glory, the fruit of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, joy. I just robbed you of it because I got your focus on a political party. Mm -hmm. I got your focus mm -hmm. on a statement that somebody said. Or I got your focus away because somebody hurt your feelings. Some words by a person who's made up of flesh and bone rob you of your joy. But to reality, nobody can without our own permission. But it really isn't likely to happen if our focus is on the vastness of who God is. So he's revealing himself like crazy through his creation Amen. as our creator. Amen. David is acknowledging that. You know, that's where we're that's where we're headed. Which is like a groom coming out of his chamber, it it rejoices like a strong it's talking about the sun, okay? That the sun is the dominant part of our universe that we see on where we live. It's the most dominant. Without the sun, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, I mean, we rotate around it, it gives life. The sun is so important. The sun is so dominant. In a minute, he's going to refer, his word is so dominant to us spiritually in the same way, or, or not. It just becomes some words on a page to us. It just becomes something that I might look at maybe this week. I bet the preacher's going to preach and somebody's going to teach. And you know, this, this is his food for us right here. And so, so he's, he says, but like a groom coming out of his chamber, it rejoices like a strong person to run its course because he talks about the suns in place. It's rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end of him and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The sun is going to continue 
<laughs> with light wherever it shines. And of course, we know in scriptures, he's light. Satan's darkness. He's light. And we also know that like the refining fire, what happens in a refining fire? Junk goes in, so all the dross. Mm -hmm. But what's it end up? Pure. 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 A reflection of God. That's how the refiner knows it's done, right? He keeps heating it up, stirring, and getting the dross out. And so hours. And then he smiles. Why? Because he sees his reflection. That's God with us. Does he smile when he sees, am I, is my life reflecting him? Or is he still getting the dross out? Probably he's still getting dross out because I'm imperfect like you are, we are. But it's a process. We're walking in this light, purifying this pure. Woo, it's very powerful. Rising from one end of the heavens in a circuit to the other end, there is nothing hidden from its heat. Wow. <clears throat> So you think when we get in heaven, those emotions, you just you now kind of saying that we get distracted from things, but it's emo those things like the anger and all those. Well, uh, again, our focus will be on him. So you you don't even, you shouldn't really ever be angry or whatever. I haven't been to heaven yet. But <laughs> from what I understand, <laughs> yes. from what I understand I'm, I'm not going to be hating. Yeah. I'm not going to yes. be worried. Yeah. There ain't going to be no ulcers going on because no, I'm sweating out teeth. everything. Yeah. Or gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Um, tears. Yeah, our tears. Is it the free will he yeah. gives us to fight that. Just we will be, I think we'll have a free will, but the free will is going to be, we won't have to make a choice against good and evil because there will be no evil there. Gotcha. Yes, you're right. Okay. But listen to this. Why do you think, too, he uses the sun, this, when he's talking about the sun here as a dominant part of creation, he's also undermining something else that was going on at that time. What, what is that? The worship of the sun. Yeah, the worship of the sun. <clears throat> the, the, the sun god, the, the mm -hmm. idol worshipers, you know, the false teachers, everything. So he's undermining this as well. And that sun that you think is all powerful is, <clears throat> God has placed it in place. God is using this. He created this sun. It's not that's not your sun. It's like and we're not going to go here, so don't jump. Don't you jump in here, please? <laughs> it's my fault for bringing this up, but I, it's just an illustration. Someone stole our rainbow or tried to. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, there's beautiful rainbows. Is a message from God that He won't have to bring flood again. Mm -hmm. And then somebody stole mm -hmm. that. Is that everything, flags to whatever. Is a rainbow. They, they, when I say they stole it, they didn't. Just like they can't. That's God's. That's God's mm -hmm. rainbow. Yeah. I'm not they giving it up. It, they misappropriated. They, yeah, they misappropriated. Yeah. They, misappropriated yeah. they didn't put a record vision in. I don't know what it is. He's a deceiver. That's very good. Yes. Satan yes. is a deceiver, yes. and he wants to deceive, yes. and he wants to even yes. use it. Those types of things. To tell the person who's not in the word, who's seeking, that's not looking, that they start believing the same thing that we believe, that a Christian believes. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's everywhere I've been, whether it's voodoo, the occult, and I found it in Brazil, we found it in Haiti, uh, they try to take scripture and try to build enough common ground on it to say that we believe the same thing, except ours is yeah. more powerful. Mm -hmm. Even Islam. Islam, mm -hmm. you know, they, they claim that their mm -hmm. Isa is our Christ, which mm -hmm. he's not, but they, they're claiming. And, and he's a good man. And he'll sit in judgment of people. He's right next to God, Allah. Oh, yeah, so we got the same guy. Right. Oh, but he's a prophet, but he's not as good as Muhammad, though. That's right. There's a warning in there not to add or take away from That's Scripture. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is yes. if somebody has never read this, we'll end up with that. Right. If they're not reading it and never read it, they don't even know it says it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we've got to be careful as those who have read it mm -hmm. to not allow that to happen. And it can happen very subtly. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be careful here. All right. So, so he's just basically one through six. He's just talking about the awesome creation that he put everything in place, and it just screams out the majesty of God. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now let's look at seven through ten reflections on the power and wonders of His Word. Okay. Um, so somebody read seven through ten for me, please. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. 
The testimony, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they are they than gold, yea, than, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Amen. Okay. So, um, God's Word. Our spiritual food. Our love letter <coughs> from God. That this isn't ink on a page. That this is God breathed, inspired, allowing men to pin it for him, for us to enjoy, that I can read and you can read today and tomorrow read something on the same page and it say a whole different thing. Right. But it didn't say a different thing, but it ministered you in a different way. Right. The interpretation on the second day may be different than the first day. Woo! That's good. Well, how, how can that happen? Did that ever happen to you in biology class? <laughs> Did that ever happen to you in history class? It can be interesting. Biology can be very interesting. Uh, history can be interesting. But it's not life changing. It, it, it does not. And, and what's it say? What are the things it says that seven? It, what are the things it says that the word does? What's verse seven say? Refreshing the soul. Restores the soul, refreshes the soul, revives the soul. You ever needed your soul revived? You ever had a desert time? Anybody ever had a desert time? No, I know desert times. Okay. Praise the Lord, we don't have to live in the desert, but we can experience the desert for something. Get your wing knocked out of us spiritually or emotionally or physically. But he can restore, and that's what he's all about. Redemption is what Christianity is about to begin with. And then uh, restoring the soul, uh, and then it says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Oh, I'm so thankful that the simpleton <laughs> can have wisdom, you know? That he can, he can change a heart, he can revive a heart, he can save a, a lost soul. See, when we're revived, that means there's something there to revive already, okay? Mm -hmm. There's something already there to get restored. But he can, again, salvation comes to him alone. All his idea. So, yeah, do, in, yeah. the, in the King James, it says converting the soul. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, All right. So, there. Salvation. Yeah. Salvation. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Oh, boy. Um, enlightening the eyes. What does that say to you? Oh, that's where. It's the eyes lead to the soul. Okay, the eyes lead to the soul. Or the, what do they say? The mirror, the the mirror to the soul, the door to the soul, the window to the soul. Yeah. But well, when you what else is it? You read the word as a lost person. Eyes, it's 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 it opens your eyes to the truth. Barb, would you say? Yeah. Say the same thing? Okay. Uh, it illuminates. You know, there's times, there has been time when I sit there and I went, hmm. <laughs> and I'm trying to journal, and I, I didn't understand what it said. How can I journal it if I don't even understand what it said? You know what I journal when that happens? And it has happened a time or three? Lord, I don't understand what this is. I write it down. <laughs> I look forward to the day I understand this. <laughs> and sometimes that would bring conviction to pick up the phone and call somebody that I believe, I trust, who knows God's word, who could take me to the Greek and the Hebrew and history that I didn't understand. And they helped me. Ah, I see. Thank you. But there's times when I don't, I don't have to make that call. He just reveals it. Mm -hmm. And you get, you have that aha moment. You ever had an aha moment? Mm -hmm. College algebra, just over your head. Choom, choom, choom. And then one day you go, aha, and you got it. But you could have got it all along, but you didn't for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I don't mean to bring up painful memories. All right, those so, are just current memories from each other. Thank you, Austin. Bless you. We'll lay hands on you before we leave. Um, my, the version I'm reading says yeah. giving light to the eyes. Giving light to um, the eyes. Okay. So. To be able to see and to be efficient at doing something, you need that light. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
if you spend time in that light and you study, and I'm thinking about an experience I've had, when you get in those moments where you might not have that light in those darker moments, you can still accomplish that task. Uh, what I'm thinking of is uh, in my past, I've done technical rescue. Um, you have to learn ropes and knots. You have to learn how to tie knots. Well, when you can see what you're doing, it can be kind of easy. But we trained to the point where we were doing this in a completely blacked out room with no doors, no windows, lights off, zero light. But we were still able to tie these knots because we spent the time in the light. We studied, we, we were, the, the knowledge was imparted to us. Amen. And that's what that verse to me is. Very good. You know, it's, that's it's, a great, you know, that's a great that, that, example. The commandments are, are mm -hmm. imparting that knowledge yeah. to us. And then here's another, here's another one that could go with that very well. We don't always have the Bible with us. I mean, literally, I don't have my Bible with me. I have, have it with me a lot. But I don't have it with me all the time in every situation. But there's times I need the scripture. I mean, I do need the scripture all the time. So how can I have scripture to either share with somebody or for myself when I need it if I don't have my Bible? Ah, scripture memory. And I won't tell you how many times, this Satan, Satan's the biggest liar in the world. Because one of his deals is, oh, I can't memorize scripture. I've tried it, I can't memorize scripture. And Satan's like, yep, I got you. Now it may take you, it may, somebody, there's some people that just get it just like that. They can look at it and they got it. Well, praise the Lord, I've only known two in my life that literally had a photographic memory. They could look at it one time, they had it. Made me sick. I mean, made me sick. <laughs> and then some of us have to review it and review it and review it and we kind of get it. And, and, but if we're not, and then some, we have to review it. What if it, what if all I could do is memorize one verse a month? It took me a whole month to memorize a verse. Well, at the end of the year, I got 12. At the end of the year, I got nine. If I didn't work on that. In 10 years, how many do I have? 120. Yeah, if, golly, I could have 240, but in 20 years, you'll see I'd be 90, oh, 90, <laughs> 93. Point I'm making is scripture memory is like, Matt's so correct. It's what we learn in the light so that when we find ourselves not in, I don't even mean the darkness of evil, but not knowing what to do, we still have God's word. And so I just want to challenge us all, every one of us, that wherever you are on scripture memory, take it up a notch, whatever that is. If you're not doing anything, do something. If you're doing something, do a little bit more. If you're doing a little bit more already, do ratchet that up a little bit. But let's be challenged. To get you, know, you hear uh, stories of prisoners of war oh. that you know mm. they, they are so thankful that they memorize mm -hmm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. verses to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Brother Joe Stoneham, who was one yeah. of the amazing saints that we knew at First Baptist, when I saw him the last time before he passed, godly, godly guy. Uh, they went in and did the pacemaker thing on his heart. And, and it took forever because he didn't have any more electrical spots that he could, they could attach to. They finally found one more. <laughs> and they said, that's it. We got no more spots to go to. The next time, it'll be glory. Well, he was ready anyway. He loved the Lord. His eyes had gone. He was blind. He could barely hear the scream at him. Um, but he told me he had one regret. Brother Charlie, I just wish while I had my eyes and my mind was working, that I had memorized more scripture. Because he couldn't read God's word anymore. And, and of course, and he couldn't hardly hear, so if he put on a tape of verses, it was gonna blow everybody out in the room. But the point being, let's don't get to the end of our life and regret that. And I'm not saying memorize. We're not gonna have a test, but I'm, I am encouraging you. Write down, have a verse on a card that you just carry around with you all the time until you learn it. And then get another one and do it again and do it. Do it the ones that you know you could use. Maybe sharing the gospel, maybe whatever. Do the Roman but, roads. Hmm? Do the Roman roads. Roman roads, yeah. 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 There's, there's all kinds of things, but memorize scripture. All right? So we, we, oh, we got off of there. Yes. Real quick, because yes. we had a really great Bible study teacher. He had come from the back.
background of doing lots of Christian counseling and rather than prescriptions and mm -hmm. all kinds of other stuff, he said, what's in your medicine cabinet? Mm -hmm. When you're sick, what are you reaching for? And that's always stuck to me, mm -hmm. was what are you reaching for? <coughs> are you trusting man's word? Are you trusting God's word? Then you're gonna have something to reach mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Amen, amen. That's a good word, that's a good word. Mm -hmm. And then number 10, before we wrap up at 11 through 14, they're more desirable than gold. Yes, they're much pure gold. Not just gold, but much pure gold. And then he says, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. More desirable. When you desire something, what is it? What are you doing? I desire something, it means what? Seeking it. Seeking it. I it. want it. I long, I long, yeah. And then he goes, oh, so... So that, this could be, this goal could be possessions. There's nothing wrong with your bass boat or your golf clubs or your favorite car or whatever you own or your tennis racket, Teresa. You know? and, uh, and, uh, but what I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with any of our possessions as long as it's not more important to us than my time with the Lord. That's all. As a matter of fact, you know, my bass boat, I could spend some awesome time with God out there. I can invite people to go fishing with me and witness to me. There's all kinds of things. But I don't want it to ever be more important to me than the time I spend with God. And if I find that something has started over, it, it can be good stuff, like working out. We should take care of the temple. It's the Holy Spirit. Take care of it. It's dwelling right here, the temple. I was looking at all these temples right here. Okay? Uh, we need to take care of it. But if I start... That's more important to me than spending time here. That's sort of where Sharon is going. Uh, this other one gets real personal for me because he gets into the honey and drippings of the honeycomb, <laughs> like appetite. Mm -hmm. I think about when Janice says, hey, I bought, I bought a package of 10 chicken legs. I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> She's got the best way, better than fried chicken. She does, I don't know what she does, how she does it. Crust is amazing. Just melts in my mouth. Charlie, you're making us hungry. <laughs> and, and and I mean, I, I really I really get excited about that chicken leg. Okay. Uh, okay. Now the reason I'm chasing chicken legs is, is do we hunger for God's word? By me saying that, Keith said you're making us hungry. I, I pray our lesson in the preaching today, and that's going to make us hungry. Hunger. For God's word. You know, he talks about honey, Charlie, and, and honey doesn't go bad. Right? Yeah. You know, they found honey that's ancient and it's still good. And yeah. then gold, if you think about yeah. it, pure. sitting in the dirty earth, but when you find it, it is just pure and shiny mm -hmm. and, you know, and it's got no dirt on it, which yeah. is amazing, right? Yeah. So, what do we seek after? What do we hunger after? What do we thirst after? You ever been real thirsty? Mm -hmm. The only way you quench is with water, and a coke mm -hmm. won't do it. It's better than nothing, it's wet. But water, whoa, mm -hmm. pure water. And so let's thirst for God's word. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, make that your prayer. Yeah. Be careful what you pray. Mm -hmm. And if you pray, make me thirst for your word, hunger for your word. I have a question. Yes. You so that. just in looking in verse nine, mm -hmm. like the judge in like oh, the second yeah. part, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So in verse 10, he's talking about the judgments of the Lord. So that would be God's word, mm -hmm. the judgments. Yeah, okay. and the judgments is just like a judge bringing a verdict. And his verdict is right. When God says, okay. this is the way it is, this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Period. There's no if, ands, or buts, no negotiation. When he says, this is wrong, it's wrong. When he says, this is right, it's right. Mm -hmm. and that's his, he caught, it's his verdict. And that's what it's talking about. And I, I'm sorry for skipping the fear of the Lord right there. That's a very important part right there. Okay? When we think about fear, what, what do we think about? What's, what's the word? Respect. Huh? Respect. Respect. Awe. Yeah. Oh, reverence. Okay? In this context, according to some smart guys I read, okay, mm -hmm. it's also synonymous with God's word. Because God's word should cause us to have this reverent fear of the Lord. It's being in awe of God. He's not a grandpa. It, it, I, I, you may not mean anything by it, but when you say the man upstairs, you are really bringing him down. Mm -hmm. He is not a man upstairs. Mm -hmm. He's not some grandpa sitting on the cloud. Yep. He is God Almighty. I am, yeah. he said. That's
that's who he is. And, he, and we need to treat him that way and be in respect there and know that God's word takes us there, okay? And then we have two minutes to get mm -hmm. 11 through 14, which is taking a deeper look into our hearts. And this is a good way to end anyway. Mm -hmm. Because as David is writing about the splendor and majesty of his creation, the wonders of his word, he then takes a deeper look into his own heart but I'm putting our hearts here, okay? And, and, and I'll, I'll read this. Moreover, by them, talking about the word, okay? Uh, Thy servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Who, who knows? Who really knows your heart? God does. Mm -hmm. You do, but sometimes you try to justify, rationalize, negotiate, whatever. Okay? He knows. Acquit me of hidden faults. Also keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me, then I shall be blameless. And I shall be acquitted of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. 14, Lord, that's a good one. If you want a word, word to memorize, start off there. 1914, write it down, it's a great year. Keith was born in 1914. Okay. Sorry, Keith, you're such a target. <laughs> I'll call and apologize later. Okay, okay, okay but let's, let's just let's take a few things from this. Okay, he says um, he, he's he's already been talking about God's glory in creation, and now he's talking about His Word, and then all of a sudden he's talking about check out my heart <clears throat> by being in awe of God, by understanding the incredible. Uh, power of his word he, conviction came and he's saying oh. you know in Psalm 139 23 it says search me oh God don't there again be careful what you pray mm -hmm. Psalm 139 23 write that one down that's a good one to memorize too because he's going to say he, he said search my heart <laughs> see if there's any ways in me wicked ways any ways that aren't pleasing to you and then hush because he will show it to you. He'll show you your pride, your anger, your lust, whatever it is. He'll do it. <laughs> but that's how we get cleansed, is when we do that. So he says, um, uh, and he talks about these hidden sins. Are there really any such thing as hidden sins? No. God knows, and you know. Okay? Even if you're trying to rationalize, same thing. He knows. Okay? Presumptuous sins. What does that mean? What's a presumptuous sin? Willful. Willful. There you go. A willful, flagrant, I'm going to do it. I thought about it. I'm going to do it. He's going to forgive me anyway kind of thing. Playing games with God. Kind of like premeditated. Premeditated. Yeah. Premeditated murders like worse than the other kind. Okay, murder is murder though. But that's the worst kind. It means you planned it. You had a scheme and you carried it out. Oh, that, that one's going to get the hardest sentence for sure. Flagrant disobedience is where you do it on purpose and you know it. And he's saying, please protect me from the presumptuous sin because he knows he was capable of this presumptuous sin. And we're all capable if we camp out long enough on that sin. And so he went from, wow, God's awesome, the word's powerful like the sun dominant in creation, the word is dominant for all of us and showing us things. And then all of a sudden he's under conviction. Check out my heart, God. Check out my heart. And so well, he's made a case for why. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Change. Yeah. Well that yeah. is God's word is perfect and it has set yeah. forth that case mm -hmm. that this is perfect, unchanging, bigger mm -hmm. than anything. That's why he can Amen. This is our walk with mm -hmm. Jesus. And so I think it was Warren Wiersbe I stole this from. <laughs> he said, you know, this Bible in my hand is a good thing. But this Bible in my hand and in my head is even better. Mm -hmm. But the Bible in my hand and in my head and in my heart is best. Mm -hmm. Because we can even have a lot of knowledge. Satan has knowledge and trembles for the knowledge of who God is and Jesus is. Amen? And so, again, 
Oh, let's take this serious. Okay? It's a love letter. Enjoy it. There will be times you'll go to the woodshed because of it. There will be times that you're encouraged, instructed, inspired. But it's all good. And it's all for your good. Amen? Mm -hmm. agree with that? And so, uh, his creation, his word, and our hearts. Let's end with thinking about what we're going to do with what he's shown us in our heart today. Okay? Brad, would you close us? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that uh, your word will penetrate our hearts and just reveal to us what you want revealed, Heavenly Father, because uh, your, your will is good and it's perfect and it's pure. And let your word be a lamp unto our feet. And Heavenly Father, thank you for this class. Thank you for our pastor. And just I just pray your, uh, your hands of blessing upon us as we leave this place and go to the mission field. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great, great. Have a great rest of the weekend.